Hi guys, this video is very, very long overdue. I've been meaning to make this video, I think, since even before I started this channel. It is the top design and decorating mistakes you're making and how to effectively solve them. We're just gonna run through my list and really not only are these design and decorating mistakes, but they're some of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to interiors. So let's jump right into it. You choose your paint color first. I know this sounds a little bit backwards, but in the interior design industry, you always pick paint last. Paint is always the first thing that gets installed during a construction phase, but every great designer knows that paint is the last thing you select. Why is this? You basically want paint to match all of your interior decor. You can't just slap a piece of neutral color on the walls and then pick out all your furnishings and obviously they don't match. That's the quickest way you'll have a space that doesn't scream designer. The reason why you want to pick your paint last is because a paint could be custom matched to anything in the space. For instance, if you're selecting paint for a bedroom, the focal wall in your bedroom would be your bed. So until you figure out what color your bed is and all of the accompanying accessories that go with it, your area your rug, your nightstands, your bedding, maybe even the drapery in back, you want to make sure that all of these colors go together, they vibe with your style, then you can custom match a paint or pick something from thousands of paint color decks to match the rest of the space. That is how you get a truly unique space that looks very high-end designer chic. I can't tell you how many times my friends, my family, like even old clients text me on the fly and they always ask me, hey Julie, like what's the hottest paint color right now? Like what color should I paint my house? And I'm like, well, what does your house look like? What color is your furniture? What color are your drapery treatments? Of course, colors of your furniture change from room to room. So it's always a good rule of thumb to figure out what the focal point is in that particular room and then select your paint color around that. Another decorating mistake you might be making is buying matching furniture. Have you ever noticed in your parents' home where you walk into a bedroom and they have like matching nightstands with a matching dresser and then a matching tall boy and then a matching like mirror right above the dresser? That is the fastest way to make your room look completely stale. We are not talking about the 80s style of matchy matchy everything. What you want to do in the modern day is to change it up. If you have a great painted dresser, you could try matching it up with nightstands in birch or oak or like a really beautiful distressed driftwood color. What you want to do is have your furniture coordinate but not be completely matchy matchy. That way when you start changing out different pieces of furniture, all you have to do is look for a coordinating color, a coordinating design element, and it'll still look really beautiful in the space. This same rule applies from bed sets to hardware to finishes and fixtures. For instance, when it comes to a kitchen, you don't have to match all your hardware to your fixtures. If you had a matte black chandelier hanging directly over your island, you could have really beautiful antique brass hardware on your cabinets and your drawers. You can even coordinate with a matching brass fixture for your faucet. Mixing metals makes your space look really contemporary, very current, and right on trend. Another design mistake you're making is hanging your TV too high or really hanging it right above that fireplace. I know if you spoke to 10 different designers, they'll probably have 10 different opinions on this, but trust me guys, human factors in interior design is my specialty. The optimum height to hang your TV, especially when you're in a seated position in front of it, is about 65 inches AFF. AFF is just a fancy industry term for above the finished floor. So for instance, you have wood floors. You want to measure from the finished floor up 65 inches and that is where you'll hang the center of your television. This is a good rule of thumb for TVs that are around the 60 inch mark, between 60, 65, 70 inches. Anything smaller, you could go a little bit lower, but 65 inch is the correct viewing height. And this is why. Once you're in a seated position, say a sofa that's right in front of the TV, you don't want to be squinting to see what's on the TV. You don't want to strain your neck when you're viewing the TV from like too high of an angle. You want to have your TV hung at the optimum viewing height 
for comfort and visibility. Not to get too technical, but basically at your eye level, you should have about a 25 degree plus or minus angle to the center of the TV. That means it's ergonomic, it's not straining you, it's comfortable, and you're kind of getting that entire expanse of what you're viewing on the television. A typical fireplace is about 36 inches high. Now, if you're mounting the TV above your fireplace, which includes an eight to 12 inch hearth surround, and then you have a mantle on top of that, and then you hang your TV, it is way too high. You're almost about like a 45 degree angle, which is almost 20 to 25 degrees above the ergonomic viewing height. I have actually hung TVs above a fireplace in homes before, and it's usually only when you have a great room where you might have a sofa that's sitting in front of it, but you're really just leaving the TV on because you're servicing an entire expanse of space. People are walking back and forth, there's someone in the dining room, there's someone in the kitchen, and you kind of want everyone to enjoy the viewing experience. That is the only time that I would recommend placing a TV above a fireplace is when there's adjacent rooms that can enjoy it as well. But you're probably wondering, if I have a fireplace in my room, then where do I put the TV if it's not hung above it? I bet you if you look to the left or the right of that fireplace, you have a blank wall space. All you have to do is put a credenza, a console, or a dresser right next to it and the TV can sit right on top of that. Or you can hang it on the wall directly above that console. That way, the fireplace becomes your focal point for the room and not some electronic device. Another design mistake you may be making is hanging drapery panels at window height. I know you guys have heard this age old adage time and time again. Windows are fabricated in very typical measurements. During construction, they get installed at code compliant heights in your home. If you don't have a custom home, most likely windows are hung about the same height in every single room. That does not mean that you hang your curtains and your drapery panels directly above the window. If you look right above the window, you'll see a blank wall space. What you're supposed to do is hang your drapery panels as close to the ceiling as you can. So what that does is it draws your eye up and it visually makes the room look larger and the ceilings look higher. The idea is to not frame your window box. The idea is to frame your window elevation if you're looking at that wall just straight on. Then you're probably wondering what is the correct height. A rule of thumb that I follow for all of my interiors is hanging that drapery rod about three to four inches below the ceiling. So you want to take a tape measure out and measure from the ceiling down three or four inches and that is where you would be placing your rod. Another factor that you have to consider is how large your finials are. Finials are those end caps that you put on the end of a drapery rod. They're usually decorative. So if you have like a really beautiful fat finial, you want to make sure that there's ample room between the height of that finial and the top of the ceiling. You want to give it a little bit of breathing room. So if your drapery rod is hung about three to four inches below the ceiling height, and then you have a finial that kind of juts out another inch above that, and you have at least two to three inches away from the ceiling, then that is a perfect height to hang your drapery rod. Now, if you're purchasing store-bought window treatments for this drapery panel, you want to measure from the drapery rod to the floor, and that is the window panel that you need to be purchasing. The correct terminology in interior design is drapery treatments. You can call it drapery panels. Typically, you don't really call it curtains, but if you are searching online, they'll put it in like a curtain section. So your drapery panel and curtain that you purchase needs to be the height from your floor to the drapery rod. Anything that's shorter than that is just too short for that window. You could always purchase a drapery panel that's longer and then bring it to your seamstress and have them hem it up. Your room lacks a focal point. What is a focal point? A focal point is typically something that your eyes naturally draws to once you enter a room. For a bedroom, your focal point would be the bed. That's pretty obvious. A focal point could also be a beautiful fireplace in your living room. It could be a really beautiful bookcase in your office. But for other rooms that don't have permanent fixtures like a fireplace, you have to create a focal point. A focal point could be as simple as like a really big piece of artwork in a room or like a beautiful tapestry hung up on the wall. Just think any fixture that's attached to a wall can become a beautiful focal point for the space. It allows you to place furniture directly around that focal point and create like a beautiful conversation area or a seating area. So a tip when it comes to focal points, it's what your eyes naturally see right when you enter a room. It typically should be at eye level or above and then you can naturally create a space around it. 
Speaking of focal points, another design mistake you may be making is painting a focal wall, aka an accent wall without any real accents or focus. This is probably one of the biggest design mistakes I see people making over and over. I walk into a home and then all of a sudden there is this like high contrast paint color that's painted on just one wall. There's nothing on that wall. I mean, there might be like a television, but what is it that you're trying to highlight? What is it that you're trying to accent? If you're not trying to accent anything special or particular, what is the point you're making? You have to ask yourself, what is the story I'm trying to tell here? What is it that I want people to focus on? What is it that I'm trying to accent? If you're not trying to accent anything in front of that wall, do not paint that accent wall. Do not slap some really beautiful treatment on that wall, like a wall covering or a really beautiful painted texture. Just leave that focal wall towards something that you want people to focus on. Pushing all of your furniture up against the walls. I touched on this topic in my previous video, furniture layouts to maximize your living room space. You guys know that you should not be pushing your furniture up against the wall. I know what you're saying, Julie, my living room is so tiny. If I don't push the furniture up against the wall, it's gonna make it look even smaller. But on the contrary, if you use your furniture, your sofa, a coffee table, maybe two accent chairs to designate a zone and create like a little hall or a little path in back, not only does that create a focal point for the living room and designate a function for the space, but you've actually created and designed a plan with your furniture for that particular room. You're controlling what the viewer sees and how that room functions, and that is Interior Design 101. Pushing all of your furniture up against the walls is one of the easiest and quickest ways to make your room feel completely unwelcoming, totally disconnected and uninviting. Imagine having your sofa on one side, two chairs on another. How can your guests engage with each other in the room when they're sitting all the way across from each other? So think about your furniture layout in relation to how you want the space to function. Another design mistake you might be making is purchasing too small of an area rug for the size of your space. Let's break down what an area rug is. An area rug should define your area. An area rug does not mean you're defining the coffee table. So you need to purchase an area rug that sits comfortably beneath your sofa, your coffee table, your accent chairs, and then maybe some accent tables that are around it. I typically find that an eight by 10 is way too small to define an area. The first thing you wanna do is situate all of your furniture down. You'll have your sofa, your coffee table, and all of the accent furniture around it. So take your tape measure and then you'll measure out like a really huge rectangle. As long as your furniture sits on top of this rectangle, that is the size of the area rug you should buy. The area rug should not be stopping short in front of the sofa. That means it's way too small. The area rug should also have the accent chairs be sitting on top of it so that it creates a large conversational area and in turn, it would make the room seem even larger. I mean, I'm looking through all of my notes now and I have this laundry list of design mistakes that I wanna to talk to you guys about, but I'm thinking of making this a series. How do you guys feel about top design mistakes you're making per room? Like top design mistakes you're making in the living room, top design mistakes you're making in the bedroom. If you feel like that's a video that you could benefit from please leave me a note in the comments below just say yay we want more of these type of videos or nay this is not something that's relevant to me I feel like I could dive into details once we break down the rooms little by little or else I'll be overwhelming you guys with information so if you like this type of content please give this video a thumbs up please let me know in the comments below if there's a design mistake you're making and you just want my professional opinion please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already thank you so much for watching guys I'll see you in the next one